Welcome to the ADK channel. My name is Kirk Horton and today I'm going to be reviewing a record by a French duo called Killing Spree and it's a debut album and it's called Camouflage. So who is this band? What is the background to this project? They're a death metal meets free jazz duo from France. Yes, that is exactly what I've just said. Death metal meets free jazz and Camouflage will be released on the 13th of September via Clonosphere Records. So who, who makes up this band or this duo. So we've got Mathieu Metzger, who's on saxophone, electronics and talk box. He's also the saxophonist and keyboardist in that French prog metal band Clone, who are well rated and I've covered in the past for our sister organization. And on the drum stool, we've got Grégoire Galichet. He's also the drummer in the French symphonic black metal group Death Code Society. Let me give you some context to this record then. The duo met on a tour of Japan and decided to form a project that mixes the quote raw power of metal with the unpredictable spirits of free jazz improvisation. They released their debut EP, A Violent Legacy, in 2020, featuring interpretations of Death and the Sugar Classics, and Camouflage is their debut album. So let's dig in and check it out. Track one is really a mood piece just to set the tone of the album. You can even imagine them using this as an introduction for when they come on stage. So it's called A, C and B. It's only one minute and 55 seconds long. And it's kind of like a dramatic doom metal affair with busy drum fills and sinister vocal threats, like the opening to a trite horror film. Now Metzger uses, and this is a quote, a heavily saturated saxophone manipulated with an array of machines to sound like an electric guitar. So you would actually think this was a guitar-led duo warming up on stage, but it's actually a saxophone playing those sludgy doom metal passages. When we come to the title track, number two, Camouflage, this is seven minutes and 23 seconds. And again, the saxophone sounds like a sludgy guitar similar to the Melvins, which kind of limits the power of it as an instrument and gives the music a grimy feel as the drums work away like a drum workshop. The improvisation here is really the way Galichet plays what's in his head and gives little consideration to the saxophone bombing. There are some tasty fills here and a variety of downbeats, offbeats and tempo changes. The sporadic vocal passages growl like a demonic presence waiting to possess a human host for its dastardly plans. So now the shredding sections of the saxophone sound like a low-tuned guitar playing fast scale runs on the lower strings. Here's where we need some high-end frequencies. So those expecting the free jazz grind hybrid of John Zorn's Naked City, for example, I think they'll be a bit underwhelmed here. When we move on to track number three, Disposable, this is just short of three minutes and 30 seconds. And it's clear that the true value of this music is probably watching it perform live so you can marvel how the saxophone sounds like a guitar. It's actually more upbeat and quirky here, like Beetlejuice dancing along to a jazz band raised from the dead. An entanglement of finger twisting movements encourage the drums to follow them through their chaotic patterns. This time you can hear Mike Patton and Phantomass as a clear influence. And you know, it's a pleasure to listen to the expressive drum work on this song. Moving on to the second third of the album at track number four, The Psycho Pump. This is basically say hello to Black Sabbath funneled through a distorted saxophone with a tone not actually that dissimilar to Tony Iommi's guitar in Master of Reality. Metzger allows his overdubs to play at a conventional pitch here for the first time on the record and to be honest it's a relief to hear the instrument in its original conception. Now we're in Maudlin of the Well and Imperial Triumphant territory. This song encourages you to seek the great outdoors and strip your shirt off in the meadows so you can flex your muscles and imbibe the fresh air in your lungs. When we move on to track number five, forgive the pronunciation, my French is very poor, Tout cette violence qui est de moi. So this is the first experimental song of the album with a dreamy saxophone and a quiet, quiet china splashes in the simmering in the background. You could Put this next to an album like Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. You can feel the passive tobacco smoke at the back of your throat as you qu crave a whiskey on the rocks and wonder why your insomnia will not go away. Unfortunately, when we move on to track number six, All These Bells and Whistles Part One, I've got to say, this song just keeps passing me by every time I try to analyze it. A daydream described in painstaking detail would be more coherent than this composition. 
the last third of this album really does get you back on track it really engages you again there's a lot of fascinating experimentation here perhaps the best example is track number seven all these bells and whistles part two so the drone metal approach is interesting here as it creates room for some serious saxophone soloing with eyes closed and mind focused for intense meditation it's actually quite hypnotic despite the intensity of the growled vocal passages and the doom metal drum beats the London Jazz Metal Unit 5 The Hiera Fan, so probably a good comparison here. Listen to the saxophone and drums lock in for a run of breakdown triplets at the five minute mark as Metzger overlays it with his finest scale patterns. If this isn't jazz grime, what is? And just as you're asking that question, you then come across this transformative burst of black metal at the end that will honestly leave you with mouth agape. Track number 8, 250 Slaves, is only 4 minutes and 49 seconds and the groove is impressive in this song considering that it's got a, a background in jazz. And that's down to Galiche playing in the pocket for most of this track. It also makes the improvisation easier for both musicians to extend without fearing that their minds will diverge at any point. Listen carefully and you'll hear some spooky voice effects in the background like dead souls groaning in limbo. We finally get to track number nine, which is the closing track, Chanson de Cirque Corrida de Mert. And this is one of the longer compositions on the album. And it's actually a strange piece of like introverted noise rock with technical drums and spoken word vocals fed through a voice box. Then it turns into an offbeat stoner metal dirge of low end fuzz and improvised drum soloing. You've got to ask the question, does it need to be six minutes in length? No, but come on, these are jazz musicians. so. We can't really be surprised by that, can we? The freedom in this music comes from the knowledge that you can do whatever you want with no regard to the rules, and it's ultimately successful even in this closing song. So what are my final thoughts on this record? Well, the novelty of a death metal band with no guitars and with the saxophones filling in for the low end wears off quite soon, to be honest. But to be fair, Metzger remembers the original purpose of his instrument as the album progresses, which means we no longer need to be dazzled by his manipulations for the heavier metal based compositions. There's repeat listening value here, mainly because the music's just so unorthodox and not easy to grasp at first, but it's not oppressive either. The saxophone appears in its original guise as a brass instrument with high end capabilities as the album progresses and that's certainly a good thing and it's good to hear a variety of metal influences ranging from black metal to sludge to death metal to chaotic noise rock wrestling with the free jazz. Clearly Grégoire Galichet does not feel challenged enough playing in his two black metal bands. He is a fucking monster on the drum stool on this record. Unfortunately, the solipsistic and chaotic nature of this music though can leave your mind wandering as a coping mechanism to stay focused rather than being swallowed up by the cacophony of noise. Which means it's time for our final verdict. So as a reminder, there are four categories to score this record. The highest grade, you are considered a headliner. The second highest grade, you are the main support. The third highest grade, you are the opener, as in the opening band on a bill. And if we don't like the record, cannot get into it, it just does not click with us, we would say back to rehearsals. I did agonize over this. I listened to this album three times. And at the end of each listen, I was still undecided whether it was going to be a main support or an opener. My final verdict is that this band would be ideal as an opener in that it would be a welcome to share the stage and be the first act on the bill with an artist like Neptunian Maximalism or Phantomass or even Imperial Triumphant. So go out and download it, stream it, buy it on CD on Bandcamp or via the Clonosphere Records webpage. This album is released on the 13th of September 2024. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to the EDK Rock and Metal channel and I will see you on the next one. Take care.